All right, so what I want to show you in this situation is now that we know the basic shape of an exponential function, and now that we know that we can look at the graph of an exponential function and identify what the base is, you know, what the, what the function is, now I want to talk about reflections of exponential function graphs, okay? This is what I have just uh, explained to you is the shape of an exponential function graph, right? It goes flat to the left as it approaches negative infinity. It goes through the point zero, 1, and then it goes steep, right? So this, what we're looking at right here, this is the graph of f of x is equal to, two, let's say, 2 to the x power. Okay, so this is f of x equals 2 to the x power, okay? Well, basically what I need you to understand is what we're going to ex explain in here is that this shape can be reflected in two directions. Uh, it can be reflected vertically across the x-axis, and when that happens, this is what it looks like. Instead of it being above the x-axis, it still goes flat to the left, and it still goes steep to the right, but instead of going steep up, it goes steep down. Why? Because it's been turned negative, okay? Um, and so that's what I'm going to show you now is this would be the graph of f of x is equal to negative 2 to the x. So when there is a negative in front of the 2 to the x, when the negative is on the base, okay, now it's not actually on the base, it's not like it's in parentheses, that's a completely different story. But basically we have 2 to the x power, but it is a negative function instead of a positive function. What this negative does is it reflects the graph vertically across the x-axis. It still goes flat to the left and it still goes steep to the right, but now it goes steep in a negative direction instead of steep in a positive direction. Now here's the other major difference. In 2 to the x power, we said that the, that the graph goes through the point 0, 1. And I said that all exponential functions go through the point 0, 1. Well, we're going to modify that a little bit because this is an exponential function, but it is a negative exponential function. Now that it's below the x-axis, instead of passing through the point 0, 1, this one is actually going to pass through the point 0 and negative 1. And here's why. If we were to plug a 1 in here, excuse me, a 0 in here, uh, so if we had, you know, x and then negative 2 to the x, which is the, the y value, if we were to put a 0 in here, we would have negative 2 to the 0 power, right? Now, we're not doing the negative first. The negative comes second. We do exponents before we do multiplication. This negative represents um, a multiplication times negative 1. So we would have to do 2 to the 0 power first, which is 1, then make it negative, so this is equal to negative 1. And therefore, the, the graph of negative 2 to the x power passes through the point 0, negative 1, instead of the point uh, instead of the point 0 and 1 okay and so uh, and we're gonna we're gonna work through some practical examples here uh, but it's important to understand that when you put the negative on the front of the function what that does is it reflects the graph of the exponential function vertically across the x-axis which is now below the x-axis passing through the point 0, negative 1, it's still flat to the left, it still has a horizontal asymptote uh, at 0 and going flat to the left, it still goes steep to the right, but it goes steep in a negative direction instead of a positive direction, okay? In fact, it may help you if I put some arrows on here. This goes steep in the positive direction, it goes flat to the left. This one goes flat to the left, but it goes steep in a negative direction, okay? All right, let's talk about this one over here, okay? By the way, this, this one, I call this one upside down, okay? This one's upside down. This is the normal graph. This is the same graph, but it's upside down. I call this one backwards. This one down here, this is upside down. And this one over here, I call this one backwards. 
Okay? All right, so look. This one is still above the x-axis, right? It's above the x-axis, just like this one, only instead of being flat to the left, this one is flat over to the right, okay? And instead of going, uh, getting steep to the right, it gets steep to the left, okay? In fact, it starts out steep. If, if, if we're counting from this direction to this direction, it starts out steep, and then it comes down, and it goes through the point. Now, this one is the point zero, 1. Why? Because it's above the x-axis, okay? Because it's above the x-axis, it's still going through the point zero, 1, okay? And then it becomes flat and it approaches 0 as it goes to the right. This one right here, this is the function f of x is equal to 2 to the power of negative x. On backwards, the negative is on the exponent. It's on the, the whatever the exponent is, okay? And so what would happen here is if we were to plug 0 into this, we would have 2 to the negative 0 power. Well, there is no negative 0. It's just negative 0 is just 0. So it's still 1. 2 to the 0 power is still 1. So we have 0 and 1. Okay? And so if we put a negative on the x, the graph flips backwards. And instead of being flat to the left, it's flat to the right. Instead of being steep to the right, it's steep to the left. Okay? But still, left is still pointing upwards. Okay? Because it's above the x-axis. All right, let's talk about this last one here then. This one is upside down and backwards. Uh, we could start with the original graph and we could flip it backwards and then from backwards we can flip it upside down. Or we could start the or original graph, flip it upside down, and then take the upside down and flip it backwards. Now the upside down and backwards has both qualities of upside down and backwards. It goes flat to the right, and it goes steep downward, pointing towards negative infinity. Okay? This one is upside down and backwards. And just like the graph has both of the qualities of upside down, below the x-axis, and backwards, flat to the right, steep to the left, it also has, and let me put the arrows on, it also has both qualities of the function itself. It's going to have a negative on the front, and it's going to have a negative on the x, and therefore this function is f of x is equal to negative 2 to the negative x power, okay? And so, now, which point do you think this passes through, okay? At zero, when x is equal to zero, okay, this is below the x-axis, so is it going to pass through zero, one, or is it passing through zero, negative one? It's passing through zero, negative one. Why? Because it's below the x-axis. So this is passing through zero and negative one. It's passing through a point that is below the asymptote, okay? So with this one and this one, it's passing through a point that is above where the asymptote is, but this one is one point below where the asymptote is, and this one is a point below where the asymptote is. And that's because of the negative that is in front of the function itself. That's what vertically reflects it. The negative on the exponent, that's what reflects it sideways or, or, or backwards. Okay? And so this is the regular function, 2 to the x. This is negative 2 to the x. This is 2 to the negative x, backwards. And then upside down and backwards is negative 2 to the negative x. Now, there's one more thing that's going to change on these. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our changing base. Remember in the last video, I showed you how to identify an exponential function that has a base of maybe 3 or e or 7 or 5 or something like that? If we combine what we learned about identifying the base with what we just learned about the negatives, uh, upside down, backwards, and upside down and backwards, we can now look at the graph of almost any exponential function 
and we can identify what is its base, does it have a negative on the front, and does it have a negative on the x. That's what we're going to do in the next segment.